Welcome, everyone. Glad to have you join us. We're so excited for our, our new project to try to uh, help all of you learn a little bit more about our industry and all the jobs that are available at local TV stations, right often in your own communities or your own states. And so that's really the, the goal for this week. We have a couple of partners who joined us um, in this project, and it's the North uh, Charlotte Area Association of Black Journalists and also CSB Media Arts Center which is offering a $1,000 scholarship to their school, not your school necessarily, but their program. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that at the end as well. So thank you for joining us. Um, what are you gonna hear today? You're gonna hear an overview of who we are and what we do as um, a local television station. We're gonna have a discussion about what journalism is and it's important uh, and it's how, how um, important it is and its role in a democracy. And we're also gonna do, uh, have an overview of all the jobs you can find at a local TV station right in your own community, your own state. And then we'll take a preview, a look at what's coming up this week. Okay, so what you may not realize is that we are more than just a local TV station, okay? And I'm gonna tell you what a local TV station is because there's a lot of confusion about that typically. At our station, we produce more than 40 hours of local news and programming on the NBC affiliate WCNC right here in Charlotte. We are owned by Tegna. That is the name of our ownership group. It's a company that owns local TV stations and not all of them are NBC affiliates. They have ABC, CBS, Fox affiliates, et cetera. Sometimes the local station is owned by the network, like ABC might own a local TV station or ABC or NBC or CBS, Fox. We are not owned by NBC. We are an affiliate of NBC, okay? So there's always a difference there and people get that confused. We also produce a weekly public affairs program called Flashpoint that airs every weekend. We have a website that we produce for, wcnc.com and a, the WCNC app. And we produce content for our social media channels, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. We have a loop on YouTube called the Queen City Loop, which is um, also appears on a lot of our OTT channels. And then we have staff members who also produce podcasts. Okay. And then, um, so if you listen to sports podcasts, maybe on the Panthers or the Hornets or someone else, um, you may listen to Locked On Podcast. That is now a part of the Tegna Group. And then we also produce Charlotte Today, which is a non-news program where clients can purchase segments and talk about their products and services. So you may not have known all of that is happening at your local TV station. So let's talk for a moment about journalism. I pulled this one off. Um, I Googled it. I should have sourced it and I didn't, so I apologize. But um, I just found this online when I said, you know, definition of journalism, and I liked it. It says journalism is the production and distribution of reports on current events based on facts and supported with proof or evidence. Big difference there, right? It's based on facts and supported with proof or evidence. The word journalism can apply to the occupation as well as citizen journalists, but they have to gather and publish based on facts, not just their opinion, not just some meme they saw, right? And journalistic media can include print, television, radio, and the internet. So why is journalism important? Well, journalism, in my view, is the only job protected by the US Constitution. In the First Amendment, we protect the freedom of religion, speech, press, assembly, and petition. And there we are, the, right, the freedom of press. And we are protected in the US Constitution because what we do, a free press, is vital to a successful democracy. So you think about that. There, are countries all over the world that do not have a free press and, and democracy does not flourish in those countries. Let's listen a little bit about what some people say, what, what they believe journalism is and its role. We being the journalists here, um, 
support democracy. We tell people's stories. We bring issues to the forefront of decision makers. We keep our elected officials accountable. Journalism matters in all its forms because unless you're informed, you can't make decisions. You can't make the right decisions because you won't have all the information. Journalism is the bridge between what happens and what people do with that information. The thing about legacy and traditional journalism, which people have taken for granted, is that it still performs a really important function. We learn this more and more with social media, where we have information overload. People think they can just find out for themselves and educate themselves on the issues. Uh, so our job, I think, is to uh, really use the time and resources that we have um, to gather that information and then distill it into something that makes sense. I think probably one of the most important functions of journalism is holding truth to power so holding governments and people in positions of power um, to account uh, because we can't just trust the information that we're given you know by the government or by figures of authority and I see our job here as trying to understand why politicians are making the choices they're making uh, getting them to justify them trying to explain uh, through facts and analysis why certain things are being done, to try to expose uh, problems um, that, that they may not be aware of, to try and fix those problems. It's crucial for citizens of all ages to be informed because everything that happens in the world can affect you, either it's a local issue or even something far away can affect our economic and social systems. And if you don't have the information, you can understand what that is and how it affects you personally and what choices you can make. Looking up who makes those decisions and finding out how to change something if something does need changing requires an informed citizenry. It requires a press that asks hard questions and requires a government that answers them. There are real threats to democracy. Uh, there's a real danger that um, it's easy to be misinformed, it's harder to get facts than it used to be. Uh, it can lead to mistrust, it can lead to a decline of institutions, um, it can lead to a growing cynicism. We're all in this together and part of uh, being a good citizen and contributing to that national conversation and that national decision making is, is filling your brain with stuff and not just doing stuff on the basis of what you heard yesterday from some guy down the street. Young people today are more educated than any young people in previous decades. And we know that education usually is tied to how people will approach elections and will turn out at elections. So if young people today are more educated than ever before, one of the things they have to do is educate themselves about the news, about politics, about government, and about what's going on behind the scenes. Being informed about the world keeps you informed about your life. Okay, so I, I pulled this map as well. This is the World Press Freedom Index. And if you look across the top, the way they um, put this together is um, you know, measures the degree to which opinions are represented in the market, pluralism, how many voices are there, um, abuses, the level of abuse and violence against journalists, and then independence, the degree to which the media is able to function independently. And you'll notice if you go to the, to the chart on the bottom, we're not even the strongest or best at this in the United States. Anybody know what those countries are right up there, the top three green ones, very bright green? What are those countries? Yep, Stephanie um, is pointing Norway, to them there. Norway, uh, Finland, and Denmark. I'm sorry, say that again. Uh, uh, is it Norway, Finland, and Denmark? Yeah, you're close. You're right, because there's the top ten list over on the left. So though they have the strongest freedom of press, right? Um, United States is somewhere on that scale. Um, and, um, and then there's also places then like China and Vietnam, right? And um, those countries that have no freedom of press. So um, we take it for granted in our country that we have freedom of spree uh, speech and press. Um, and not everyone in the world is as um, lucky as we are to have those rights. Um, so, you know, this is, I, I consider what we do as journalists Kind of a very patriotic thing, right? Because we hold the powerful accountable, we seek truth to power, we shine a light in dark places, we give voice to the voiceless, right? We have all these things that are part of our journalistic mission. 
Um, and we serve that in a microcosm in our local communities and states. So what we're gonna talk about are, um, this week are some of the different career opportunities that you might or might not be aware of at local TV stations. So we hire a lot of journalists and a lot of people think we're just TV anchors and reporters because that's what you see on television, right? And those are great jobs, right? And we have a lot of other great jobs. So I'm gonna tick through those and then you're gonna hear more about them this week. We have multimedia journalists. We call those MMJs. They shoot, write it and edit their own stories for TV and digital. Reporters, um, similar to MMJs, they often don't shoot their own stuff. Um, they have a photojournalist shoot for it. Usually they're more in depth or specific beat or investigative and often don't, as I said, shoot their own video. We have anchors that host our shows in the studio, right? They are the glue that hold the show together for the viewer. They also are reporters and sometimes MMJs as well and produce content. We have meteorologists who provide daily and severe weather information on TV and digital and social and to radio partners. We have sports anchors and reporters who cover local sports of interest. We try to stick on to stuff in our state so it doesn't look like an ESPN sports cast, but more local covering our local teams. Producers, uh, producers decide what stories to put in the newscast. They write and organize the content. So if you love news and you love writing and you love content, but you don't want to be on TV, this is a great um, entry job for you. Assignment desk, same thing. They're the gatekeepers of content and the news traffic controllers um, in the newsroom. Photojournalists shoot and edit the stories we tell, produce live shots from the field. Editors, we have editors who edit the um, video for our stories and our newscasts and our digital channels. And then we have a digital team that is a growing area in a lot of newsrooms with expertise in news content, social media, and digital knowledge. And then managers, as you gain more experience in a lot of these jobs, you can move into supervisory roles over different areas in news and digital. I actually started as a, um, uh, a reporter a long time ago in Lubbock, Texas was my first job out of college. Um, I shot a lot of my own video um, and I was a reporter anchor and, and producer and then moved into news management and then moved into station management. So that's how I got to be um, the general manager of WCNC um, here in Charlotte was through that coming up that news path. So this is a typical example. You've seen this, but I'll go ahead and show you. Thanks, Sakia, uh, of a news story we produced. Meantime, our Brianna Harper continues our team coverage. She's been basically roving out there, just tracking the latest on the gas lines, prices at the pump, anything that she's seeing around the Charlotte area. So, Bri, where are you right now and what are you seeing? Yeah, we're right here off of Carowinds Boulevard. It's kind of a intersection where there's multiple gas stations here. If you take a look behind me, you can see the line here has been pretty consistent at this Shell gas station as people are trying to fill up. But right across the street here at the QT, the line seems to be growing a lot longer there with cars coming and going to fill up. So far at the Circle K, it looks like they are out of gas. We did spot some plastic bags over the pumps over there. But the biggest issue right now is the traffic that just continues to grow right off of I-77 of people waiting to get in line at this Exxon. So I did get a chance to speak to some of the people who were filling up at the pump and the general consensus was they saw other people getting gas so they figured that they needed to get gas too. Some people did mention that they were really at ease so it was important for them to fill up. A lot of other folks only at half a tank maybe three-fourths of the tank but they wanted to top it off just as a precaution. But again as Tanya mentioned if you do have gas you shouldn't worry. The hope is that just like in 2008 that this may clear up sooner than we think. We'll keep you guys posted and continue to roll around the area to see what places do still have gas at this point. I'll send it back to you guys. All right, hold right there, Stephanie. So what you're seeing is Vanessa, who's anchoring in the studio. You saw Brianna, who was reporting in the field. She might have shot some of her own video that day. And then she joined with a photojournalist who then shot her live shot and was in control of that. What you didn't see was the producer, the director, all the people behind the scenes. You also notice there's a QR code on the screen. So our digital team would have produced that. And then next screen would have produced the digital content that then supported um, that story. So they would write the story for the website. 
Um, in this case, we also produced um, a, a map that had gas prices. So you would have seen that element in the story. So when you hit the QR code, you would have come to this and it would have allowed you to help find you where the gas was. So that's a lot of what the digital team would be doing behind the scenes. Okay. There are other jobs that are not necessarily as journalistic driven and they're technical jobs to some degree. Um, so if you, have a, if you have a friend or you are a little more technical in nature, we have broadcast engineers who focus on our TV equipment and transmitters. You're gonna hear from our head of technology this afternoon. Um, IT engineers, so those folks who are really good at IT, we have those engineers that um, help us with all our IT infrastructure. We have um, we look for candidates with both skill sets, if possible, for engineering and IT, but those are becoming harder and harder to find. Um, we also have building maintenance. So there's someone to help us manage our vendors and keep our building clean. We have directors and studio production. So when you see Vanessa there in the studio, there's someone that is um, often in the studio with camera or prompter. Maybe they're just in the control room. They're overseeing the live production of that newscast. And there can be entry level positions there as camera operators, audio operators, technical directors. Some stations have some of those, some don't. It, it, it's, it's a work in progress and all stations are different, but that, that's a place to get your foot in the door. And this is kind of what the control room looks like. Greg is gonna go over that this afternoon with you on directing. So that would be the producer on the right and the director, there's Chris on the left and they're um, producing uh, the newscast that you see live on the air. And that's a couple more positions, right? Producer and director uh, in our newscast. That's the prompter that Vanessa and Bill are reading. And that's the green screen that the, the meteorologist would stand in front of. So it kind of gives you a look inside the control room and what's going on and some of the jobs that are behind the scenes. Okay, other career opportunities you're gonna hear about this week, sales. Uh, that's how we support our journalism, right? That journalism costs money to produce. So we have to create a revenue stream that helps pay for our journalism. And so we have very vibrant sales staff. We have sales managers and account executives who help businesses achieve their goals with customized TV and digital marketing plans. So if you kind of like marketing, this might be an area for you. And then there's support staff in the sales department. They help manage the clients and the paperwork and the account services. So if you like being organized and detail busy work and not maybe want to go and, and, and work with clients out in the field, that would be another opportunity. So what we do, our sales department sells this advertising and we sell it on television and we sell it digitally for their social media, for their websites, for our you know, OTT channels. Um, so we have an internal advertising agency that we produce that marketing for them then. We write and produce television ads. We produce Facebook posts. We uh, post, we produce um, web ads. So that's what our in-house team does. Um, we customize the solutions. We sell the advertising to the businesses. We write and produce all the advertising for them. And then we um, take their orders, track them and make sure and provide information for billing. So that's a whole nother piece of a lot of jobs that are in our station um, that are great jobs. Uh, this would be an example, kind of a fun one of a TV commercial that our team produced. Only rainwater belongs in the storm drains. Anything else can pollute our creeks. There's lawn fertilizer, car washing in driveways, lawn clippings, even dog poop can pollute our creeks. So scoop the Sorry, it's it's uh the... my friend. It goes to the creeks in the end. <laughs> Only rainwater should go into storm drains. It's a really funny spot, but it's uh, acting up a little bit on us. Learn it's more from okay. water I think part of it is don't move the cursor arrow, Stephanie. That, <laughs> that confuses the player, but you get the idea, right? So that would be something that our team produced for a client. Okay. Only rain. You'll, you'll never get that out of your head the rest of the day now, right? Okay. <laughs> um, and then other jobs. We have a marketing department. 
So we have all these products, these newscasts, the sports, weather, right? And we have to market our own products um, to the community to try to get them to watch our news and consume our products. So we have our own in-house marketing agency that support our products. And then this is the same group that also serves the clients that our sales team is selling. So we write and produce TV and digital spots for a television and digital advertising campaigns. We have photographers who shoot and edit the commercials and promotional spots, those for our own products. We have social media producers who write social media posts and help our talent with their social media pages, like teach them how to market because they're good journalists, but they're also not thinking about how to market themselves or market our news. So we help them with that. We track and manage our own advertising schedules on television and digital for our own products. Um, our managers look for ways to leverage our brand with other partners, and our managers are responsible for the planning and marketing campaigns, the creative process, the scheduling. So if you're thinking, oh, I want to be at an agency or an advertising agency, guess what? We have our own agency that supports our clients and supports our own station and all the products we produce. And here would be an example of a spot that our team produced for our own newscast. Now you have the power to tell the difference between real and fake, and WCNC Charlotte is here to help. It could be a post on Facebook or Instagram, or something that just doesn't feel right. We can verify that yes. Our team finds experts, digs up sources, and uncovers the answers to your questions. And if we can't verify, you'll know that this too. This is false. Before you click share, get that social media claim verified. And see the difference Verify makes in the news you watch. Only on WCNC Charlotte. So now great example of, of how we produce um, commercials, promos we call them, um, for our own TV stations. And then a couple of other areas where we have jobs, we have jobs in finance and human resources. So if you have business friends, right? Um, most TV stations share these jobs in their companies um, with other stations that have the same owner. So like our CFO also helps another Tegna station and our um, HR person actually serves two or three stations and she's based in Jacksonville. And, um, you know, we're not going to go over these this week, but it's important. It's important to know. Um, Zakia says, I'm a business major. I'm telling you, think about sales and make sure you attend the Friday morning session at 10 a.m. for sure. Thursday, um, but Thursday. in case you have HR friends or business friends, there are other great jobs. Um, we also even have a research position. We share that with another um, station as well. So if you like research or analyzing data, the, these are other jobs that you might not have thought about at local TV stations, right? Okay, so what can you do now? One thing I would highly suggest is that you consume local journalism. And local journalism doesn't mean MSNBC or the nightly newscast with Lester Holt or Fox News, right? That's national journalism. Concern, consume local journalism from your state or your market. Watch local TV newscasts. Follow local TV stations and their social media channels. See what they're doing on their Facebook page and what their talent's doing. Um, listen to a local TV station's podcast, download the station's app, accept push alerts, see what they're doing as far as their digital content, stay informed on current events. I know that's hard when you're in school, but figure out a way where you're consuming some current events and you can't just rely on Facebook, right? That you're consuming some current events and you're aware of what's going on in the world around you. And volunteer or work at your school's newspaper, TV, or radio station, get involved in media. Just even if you think you want to be in sales and sell advertising, it's okay to, you know, go write for the newspaper. And guess what? At the station's uh, radio station and newspaper, they would need people to sell advertising at your college too, right? So you can do that or you could create the ad. Um, and join journalism groups and associations like our partner, the Charlotte Area Association of Black Journalists. They have lots of training opportunities. There's Asian Journalists Association, um, Hispanic Journalists. There's a lot of those groups that can also be helpful to you um, in your career. Um, I'm going to pop out now of this and we're going to take some questions, but I am going to backtrack. I forgot to introduce myself and my, our part, my, my helpers here. So I am Joan Barrett and I am the general manager, the president general manager of WCNC Charlotte. 
And I have been here just about a little over a year. I started right when COVID started. So really good timing on my part. Uh, got here on Tuesday and then I started walking everybody out on Friday. Uh, but it's been a great year. We have a great team. I came here from Denver. I was running the Fox and CW stations for Tribune and Nexstar in Denver, two other companies that we were owned by Tribune and then sold. And then Lauren Beckerly is on here. She's kind of been the queen of registration and getting all of that set up because she is our digital sales manager. So she is digitally savvy and she knows how to do all that fun stuff on the marketing. So, you know, that piece was uh, Lauren. And then Stephanie Mackey, who is running the presentation today, is our brand manager and she works in our marketing department. OK, so they'll be uh, with me most of the week. Stephanie will definitely be will be with me. Um, and if you're going to be on all the sessions, you'll be hearing um, and seeing from us. So that's just the overview of kind of what a local TV station is. Some of the jobs that are available at our station and they would be at the Raleigh station and the Augusta station and the Columbia television stations. Right. They're at all these local TV stations, even in New York and L.A. and Chicago have local TV stations. Um, and, and, um, and what you'll hear about this week is we'll dive deeper into each of those areas and you'll get a better look at kind of what those jobs are. So I'm going to open it up for questions. The way we'll do questions is you can post in the chat. I have a question and you can voice it, or you can write your question in the chat and I'll just call on you. That way we aren't stepping on each other, um, with our mics and you'll just have to unmute yourself to come off and on. So does anybody have any questions this morning? If you want to be a journalist, you've got to ask questions. Um, I actually do have a question. So uh, for, for most of us that are in high school, um, when we were looking for a degree or a major um, to pick, I've noticed that through most schools that I've researched that most schools do not offer a major in journalism. So is there a major that like another major that kind of like is associated with journalism um, that you could uh, apply for in college? Um, I, I, I'm, I'll tell you, I'm, I think a lot of schools offer journalism degrees. So do you know what you want to do or where your interest area is? Um, I'm, I'm not sure yet, but I've looked through different programs of communication and I was just seeing that most schools do not offer majors in journalism. Like most of the, most schools do offer minors in journalism, but, um, it, it's more are you your, finding Nathan communication degrees? Is that what you're finding? Yes, ma'am. That's yeah, that's, yeah, that's Most okay. That would be similar. Okay. That would be very similar. So they might call it communications or the communications degree. Um, and then you will find tracks in that department on, on kind of areas. You'll have to pick a track probably um, on areas that then you want to kind of go into. So do you want to, you know, be a reporter? Do you want to be a, you, you know, in television? Do you want to be in print? Do you want to take the more, uh, um, advertising side, right? You'll pick graphic tracks. design if you want to design the creative. So you would be looking for under that communication communications or journalism. You would look for a graphic design. So it depends on what school you're attending as well. I understand. Okay, thank you. We have some more Maisha, questions in the chat, Joan. Maisha, I'm going to hit that uh, scholarship question. So let me be clear: the scholarship is for the CSB Media Arts Center. That's our partner in this program. It is not a scholarship for every school that you attend or all the other schools. They are partnering with us on this program. So it is a um, program here in Charlotte. Um, I think it's a 14 week program. John is gonna get on the final session and talk to you guys all about this and how you would apply for it because one of the criteria is that you attend all eight sessions, um, but it is for their program to be clear. Okay, I see Matthew. Nadia. Oh, go ahead, Steph. Nadia has a question. Hi, everyone. My name is Nadia Marie. I'm a rising senior at Johnson C. Smith University. And I have a question. Oh, and I also major in communication arts. Everything they're saying about that is definitely true. Um, I just wanted to know what do internships look like for local rising seniors like myself? possibly in the fall, in the spring, um, more so for individuals who would like to do reporting and um, journalism. Oh, uh, well, you know, written journalism or something like that. And remind me what year you are, Nadia. 
I'm a rising senior. So in the fall, I'll be a senior at JCSU. Okay. Um, I think I, I think some groups are opening up internships again this fall and next spring. Um, I think you're just going to have to reach out and then start reaching out to local TV stations, newspapers, uh, media groups. Um, they all kind of handle them individually and separately. So there's not a great clearinghouse for that stuff. Um, and I do think they're opening up. I know a lot of the Tegna stations are offering internships um, this summer and fall. Um, so, you know, start Googling is my advice on that. Yeah, I found I found some for other stations. I was wanting to know, was there any for WCNC in particular? Yeah, we are not this fall. I expect us to next spring again in summer, and we are not this fall. We had, we chose to do this instead. All right, thank you. Uh, I have a question over here. Oh, okay, Cedric. Um, I go to um, Carolina School of Broadcasting it's, um, by the airport. Yeah, I guess it's like another version of CSB that's uh, the partner of this promotion and what I'm my degree is in digital media and I'm guessing um, from the research I've done it's an associate's degree so how would a degree like that apply to me getting a job through you guys or doing an internship until further notice how does that come into play so Cedric I think what I'm hearing you ask is you're attending CSB now and is that correct? Yeah, I'm attending the one over there by the airport, not the one that's connected to this um, to this program. Okay, I don't know the one over by the airport. I'm sorry. It's called it? it's called it's called Carolina School of Broadcast. That's the one. That's the one that I attend at the moment. Okay. But it does the same thing as the one that's connected yeah. to this okay. program. Yeah. So I, you know, so what happens, guys, is there are sizes of markets, right? And we're a 20 something market, right? And then there are going to be smaller markets like Columbia and larger markets like Chicago. And it's going to be a little easier to get an entry level job in Columbia than it is in Charlotte and way easier than Chicago, right? Uh, market size is kind of like golf. Lower score means the higher, the better. So your, your biggest markets in the country are LA, Chicago, New York, and they're like markets one, two, and three. We're market 22, is that right, Lauren? So we're considered a top 25 market. Um, and Columbia's, anybody know what Columbia is? Probably 60, 70-ish. So some of it depends on market size, right? And we do hire some, some entry-level people. And we have hired people from um, the CSB schools. We have a couple of folks now, one is a director and I believe one is a editor producer. Um, so we have hired folks from that program. Um, it's, it's, you know, just applying online, getting your foot in the door. And sometimes it's being willing to move to get that entry level job. Um, if Charlotte's your target market, you might need to go to Columbia for a couple of years and then come back to Charlotte or Raleigh or somewhere like that. Okay. All I right. Think we have a question in the chat from Kiera. How do you find which path is good for you? If you aren't 100% sure yet, just try everything. <laughs> I think sometimes it's trying multiple things, right? And I do hope that if you sit in all eight sessions this week, you'll start to get a flavor of what one might fit you. You know, if you want to be on air, that's one thing. You know, if you're just highly organized and love being in charge of things, maybe assignment desk is a good path, right? Um, so I think you'll start hearing on and then matching that to things you enjoy or you like to do. I started out on air. I was a reporter and an anchor. And I'm going to be honest, and I know Stephanie and Lauren are going to find this hard to believe, but I like being in charge of things. <laughs> I like being bossy. That's who I am, right? And and I just gravitated toward that, right? And so I was producing and anchoring and I figured out that I really liked producing more because producing, you were in charge of it and you were in charge of your show. And producing led me then to news management. And then I became a news director in Phoenix, right? And I was over the entire newsroom. And then that eventually led me to station management, right? So 
it, you know, you might start out in one thing and find out that you're going to zigzag over there. Right. And that's and okay. I would, say, I would say, leave yourself open to, um, take in all that you can get those experiences, get those internships. Um, you know, once, the world kind of starts opening back a little bit more and find those opportunities where you can and don't like just lock in on that one thing. Keep yourself open, learn all you can. I started in radio um, and I, I loved talking and being on the mic, but I also liked being in the background and helping folks and helping with branding and really representing whatever company I was with. So that's what got me to the brand manager path. So, but be open. I worked at an ad agency, a couple of ad agencies and um, for a really big brand as well. So you just never know where your, your path is gonna lead you, but stay open. Um, can I? Okay. We're gonna, uh, I tell you what, we're gonna, Gabrielle, we're gonna keep going through the chat. So if you have a question, put, put it in the chat okay. or say, okay. I have a question. And I think Cedric, did we hit Cedric already? Yeah, we got Cedric. Lenny was next. Okay. Hi. Uh, so I have a question because um, I'm doing meteorology right now and I'm considering broadcast meteorology, but uh, it's to my understanding that like you guys have some like meteorologists that don't appear on air. Is that correct? Like some like behind the scenes, like working on collecting data. Is that right at all? So some of the bigger markets might have what we call a weather producer, uh -huh. who's a meteorologist who's helping produce the shows or organizing them. I'll be honest, Lenny, in, in television, there's not a lot of those. Mm -hmm. Most, those are in the very big markets okay. and most of the meteorologists are on air. So the meteorologists like we see on WCNC Charlotte, they're all, all the meteorologists that you guys have, we've seen on air before. Yes. Okay. Yes. Gotcha. And then I have that like a, Go ahead. Pretty typical. Okay. And I have a side question. So like a producer gets like to control and like, uh, like what is produced out to the viewer. Right. So like, does like the reporter themselves or like the meteorologist themselves or the anchor themselves get to have like any creative input or control? So the, so the reporter writes their own script and their story for that day. They'll write mm -hmm. the lead in the package, the tag, the producer might edit it, massage it, or the executive producer, the manager might kind of, you know, get, have a second set of eyes, but mm -hmm. that's done by that, by that journalist. And then mm -hmm. the anchors go through the scripts, the whole show with the producer editing, you know, tweaking it in their voice, back checking. So we, you always want to have two or three sets of eyes on everything. So mm -hmm. yes. And then they would also, you know, there'd be a conversation and you'll see this this week about an editorial meeting. What are we going to lead with? And we'll all kind of decide what we'll lead with, make those decisions. So the, the show producer is certainly the captain that's kind of guiding it. And there's lots of input in the process. There is no um, dictatorship oh, okay, in the newsroom. <laughs> and the meteorologists produce their own weather casts. Um, they, you know, they might get some direction from the news director, the manager of the newsroom mm -hmm. saying what to do, or we, we want to make sure you lead with this, but they're, they're pretty much in charge of their weather cast. This, uh, Most of us non-scientists do not want to tell the scientists what to do because <laughs> you're the you. experts. <laughs> gotcha. All right. Thank you. Uh-huh. Thanks, Lenny. Kayla had a question. How would one become an anchor? What are the steps and positions you have to go through to become an anchor on TV? Typically, the... Um, uh, to become an anchor, you start as an MMJ, a multimedia journalist, and you will be shooting and writing your own stories and scripts. And then, um, and then from there, you might move into a reporter role, or you might also go into an anchor role. And the anchor roles typically, you know, again, probably easier in Columbia to get on the anchor desk than it is Charlotte, than it is Chicago, right? So you're going to need more experience in Charlotte than probably you do in Columbia. And, and the, those, in, those starter anchor jobs are often the weekend morning anchor or the weekend evening anchor. The, the evening shows and the morning shows are going to be step ups or promotions um, from those uh, weekend jobs where you get experience. So it's, a, it's first off, Shayla, just be a journalist, be a great journalist. 
you know, be great on television, be great at live reporting, communicate to your viewer. And somebody will go, oh, that person really is a great communicator. And that's what leads to the anchor desk is being a great journalist and a great communicator. Paula had a question. Since App State offers broadcasting as a major, do you have any suggestions on what minors pair well with that major? I think in part, it's what, what do you like, right? Um, what, you know, I think marketing pairs well with, you know, a broadcast, because you're always about marketing yourself, your station, your newscast. I think political science is a good one. I think business is a good one because we cover a lot of business stories. Um, so I, I think it's about what interests you and almost anything could go well with that. And I, I think what, oh, go ahead, Lauren. I was just gonna say, I think kind of to Stephanie's point earlier of being open, I think when you're looking at those opportunities with a minor, um, you know, that really is where you can kind of test out the waters of different verticals, different types of classes and paths um, to see what you really like. Um, because I think to Joan's point, I started out wanting to be a reporter and here I am as the digital sales manager because throughout college and trying different classes, um, I realized that I loved advertising and public relations um, and even had a broadcast sales class. Um, so I do think, you know, try things out, you know, even if it's something that you um, may not ever think would have been for you, give it a try. And, um, you know, you might just like it. Zakia. Zakia Johnson, you have uh, a question? Yeah, it's me. Um, my quick question, I wanted to know what is like the difficulty whenever it comes to like rising positions inside the news and um, broadcast journalism? You mean like moving up? Yeah. Position? Yeah. You know, I, I think in general, Zakia, it's about being good at what you do. It's, you know, and, and, um, and it's being a good citizen and, mm -hmm. you know, um, in the newsroom. So, I think I think there are all, it's having aptitude and a, the positive attitude and you know doing the work well and being a teammate right I'm yeah. looking for people who don't wait for me to tell them what to do they see something right. that needs fixing and they fix it right, right. they're they have initiative they're positive they if they see a problem they tell you about it but they come to you with a solution right? Instead of just, well, yeah, that's broken, you know? Um, those are the kinds of people who move up quickly in a newsroom. They right. are, you know, they're problem solvers, they're team players, um, and they have the journalists, the skills to do the job they're in. I, I, I think those people move up in any company. Is that fair, Lauren and Stephanie? <laughs> yep. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I think we answered my, my Shia's about the scholarship. Yes. And then Matthew was next. When looking to hire someone for a more technical job, are you looking for more experience or a degree? Um, you know, I, I think both of those work. I, I mean, I really do. I think, I think um, in the technical aspects, um, we often want, a degree or a certificate program or an associate's degree or something like that. And sometimes people will move up in those jobs. I mean, my chief engineer in Denver, who was one of the smartest guys I know, didn't graduate from college and he had learned everything hands on. Um, so I, I think in those fields, both can happen. Um, but education is always a great foundation for really any of these pathways. Ron, you have Ron? Yes, uh, this is uh, Ron over here. I'm here in Gastonia. Uh, currently, right now, going to um, Gaston College to further my education. Uh, over the years, I have probably about 10 years of experience on my own with camera and doing the weather back and forth in the news. Uh, and I'm really trying to just see uh, how can I best get in the dorm right now uh, with education wise, I, I hadn't completed like college like level. I uh, dropped out of school at 11th grade because I was transitioning back and forth to group homes, group homes. I didn't get to finish. 
but I have very good skill in uh, broadcasting, have my own studio here at home. And uh, it's from time to time I will call into uh, 36 and uh, let them know what's going on with the weather and news and shooting uh, video footage since I have camera and my own equipment. But I want to know more about how is it possible to still get through the door, even though I'm still in some kind of transitioning process right now with uh, getting my uh, high school diplomas. Right. Um, I, I do think whether it's right or wrong, probably a high school diploma getting that GED is needed. Uh, is the college at this point in life with all that life experience? Maybe not. Maybe, you know, um, maybe that's something. Um, but I and I do think there are entry level jobs available that get your foot in the door at different media outlets. And, I, and I'd be looking for those entry level jobs. Um, you know, uh, associate producer comes to mind. We don't have a lot of those positions, um, but, you know, I, I think getting your foot in, in the door, no matter what it is, editing, you know, right? Um, because you get in there and then you can start expressing interest or reaching out elsewhere and you can grow within the, the station. That's how my chief engineer did it, right? He took okay. whatever technical job he could get and he kept working his way up. Okay, because I used to do some volunteer work with when uh, Jim Amaras was the news operation manager back then. And I, I just, nothing really clicked there and went, went on from there, but I'm trying very hard to um, be a part of the team. Yes, ma'am. Well, Ron, I'd, I'd be happy to try to, w once you get your GED, if you reach out to me, okay. let me see how I can uh, help you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you for your time. You bet. All right. Marley has a question. What is the typical salary of a news reporter? This is how I always answered that question. Thousands and thousands of dollars. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, re it really depends on the market size, right? Um, smaller markets are going to pay less. And, I, you know, when I was in a in a medium-sized market in Wichita, um, which is a 60-some market. I think we were market 67. We were starting in the range of 28 to 35,000 for the most part. Um, that's gonna get more um, as you step up in market size, right? So again, remember it's like golf, the, the smaller the number in the market, the bigger the market. So an 80 market you know, is gonna pay probably 25 to 35,000 a starting salary in Denver is closer to 70,000 okay for but that also means in Denver you've got probably 5 to 8 to 10 years experience before you get there don't take me at that cuz every station every company's different but that gives you an idea i think it's kamaya um, what inspired you to get into journalism? Also, I'm interested in screenwriting. Do you have any tips? Is that to Joan? I believe that's probably for you, Joan. Um, what got me into journalism? I, I think what got me into journalism is I worked on my high school newspaper. Um, and then I worked at my a radio station it, through high school. I was a DJ and just being in the media. So I'm going to tell you, I think my my first interest was media. I like news and, and reading news. And, and then as I learned more about the profession, I also realized how important it is and this role we play in a democracy and how valuable um, and significant that is. So there's a lot of jobs that are maybe easier or pay more, um, you know, and I just felt like this thing we do to, to help give voice to the voiceless and, and shine a light in dark corners. And you think about all the coverage stations are doing right now with social injustice, you know, or the elections or those things. Um, this is about helping keep a democracy strong. So that's, I think it started out that way and, and morphed into feeling this um, higher calling of the service um, that we provide in our country. What and screenwriting? I have no idea. I'm sorry. So screenwriting. So if you and you know we, um, my team, the marketing team, we do a lot of copywriting. So a lot of the scripts, 
um, that you, or the promos that you would see, like that cool promo with Vanessa, with all of the lights and everything, talking about our Verify brand, um, we would write the script for that. Um, I would say, um, hopefully you're strong in English. If you can take some creative writing courses, that would really help. Um, poetry, the things that kind of don't seem like it would help, um, but poetry, writing poetry, um, creative writing, those things will help you to get strong in your writing for, for copy or screenwriting. Good answers. Thank you, Stephanie. Lauren. Lauren Ruiz. Okay, Lauren, speak up. If we come back to you, I'm gonna to go to Felice. Uh, getting ready to put together portfolios. What do you look for in a portfolio? Um, por what kind of job are you looking at? What, what is your path? Felice? Okay, I think we've had a few people drop off. I meant what makes a great portfolio? <laughs> I'm sorry. It Nadia, looks like what? she said anchor, Joan. Oh. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Great. Okay. Um, um, you know, I I would say that I not very many of you will get hired for an anchor position. So don't I, I'm just you can apply for them, but odds are you're not going to get an anchor job. You need to go get an MMJ or a reporter job in a newsroom. And then, and then set yourself up to be hired as an anchor. I'm going to tell you, it's almost a turn off when I get a college kid, college kids, sorry, college students tape, and they lead with anchoring because they think they're going to get an anchor job in my newsroom. I have five seasoned reporters and MMJs on my team who all want my next weekend anchor job, right? So they're probably going to get it over you. And that's probably even true in Columbia, right? They have MMJs and reporters they would promote up a smaller market, okay? So don't put anchoring stuff on there, put reporting. Show me you're a journalist and you can collect and produce news. Okay. Mona Lisa, Mona Lisa. My station is a local independent station. So we are self-funded and sort of getting off the sledgehammer. That was COVID. How has WCNC been able to generate revenue from businesses that have lost the means to pay for ads? Great question. Well, I think that's probably down a lane that we're, that that's kind of a business. Uh, uh, what we're doing to generate revenue is kind of what we do. <laughs> so probably not something we're sharing with um, others. I think it's just you looking for businesses who are spending money right now is the answer, right, Lauren? Absolutely. You know, there's lots of industries that certainly still are. So it's probably looking around and seeing who is, who's thriving during this time, because there are businesses that are. Samantha. I'm gonna to go to Ron. Did we get you, Ron? Ron. Yes, I'm here. Hello, Joan. Oh, hi, Samantha. Oh, sorry. Hi, Joan. Sorry about that. I was waiting for a while, but I wanted to say thank you so much for this informative session. I really did take a lot of information away. And um, my path is a little bit different. Uh, my background is in healthcare. And then I had got my master's in healthcare administration, but now I'm finishing up my master's in communications. So I've literally been applying for various roles whether in New York, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, you name it, in terms of like production assistant, anchor assistant. My interest is medical journalism, anything related to health, wellness, given my background, extensive background working in the clinical field. Um, I'm also a prospective medical student looking to enter in the fall of next year. So I've literally been applying to various like anchor assistant roles, production assistant. I've even tried other entry level career paths. I don't mind the state because I'm really trying to pave my path in television broadcasting, but my focus is the medical field of uh, broadcasting. It's been very uh, difficult to be honest with you. Um, I've even tried doing the three day television summit where I was able to be in a session room like this with other aspiring students met with the president and other uh, executive producers. When on my LinkedIn, I tried reaching out to executive producers. I've created various reels, um, montages, but 
it seems like sometimes I feel a little bit uh, discouraged because I've tried everything you can imagine, email, LinkedIn, my real submissions, but it's been really hard to gain an employment opportunity, even entry level. And let alone, this is my second master's degree. So what words of encouragement do you have for me? Um, I know this is the path that I really want to go into in terms of medical reporting and or being like a medical correspondent. What's the best advice you have for me? Because I've literally tried everything to reach out to individuals, but sometimes I feel like no one really wants to help. So I, I do think you're on the right path for those okay. faculty, which are the production assistance jobs kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, a lot of the people become uh, medical reporters in large markets or networks because they've come up the food chain, right? So okay. they start in a small market as a GA reporter, general assignments, and they do mm -hmm. some health stuff and they bring health stories and they do more health as they move on. Um, but they, but they, they've come up that route. You don't usually come in as the health reporter, right? right. Because that's someone who's, who has come up the ranks. So I think you're doing the right track with those assistant positions, but the only other idea I would have is consider doing a general assignments MMJ job in a smaller market. Okay. You got a reporter that could do some health news because you have that expertise, but you'll have to cover daily news and see if you can work your way up to the area you want to specialize in. Exactly. And what do you think about volunteer opportunities? Because I don't think I qualify for internships given my education, I don't know. I don't think they really have like internship opportunities for people who's doing like their second master's degree. So I even consider volunteer opportunities. How do you feel about that? Well, two things. I think internships, if you're in school, you can often get an internship. It's for a credit hour, right? I mean, so there's paid internships or credit hour internships, right? And as long as you're in school, um, a volunteer opportunities, there, there aren't a lot of those or shouldn't be because you know, it's against um, wage an hour, right? So, okay. you know, you can't have people work for free. <laughs> we we did away with that. <laughs> but currently, because I'm taking my master's online, I'll be finishing this December. My school does not require for me to complete an internship. So even if I do apply for internship, I notice a lot of them said this is for credit hours. So would that still so, apply to me? So you could probably just still sign up for a one hour credit. Okay. Even it's not it's not required by your school. Tegna, we do the paid route. Tegna pays the interns, um, and I does not require credit. So okay. any Tegna station, it would be a paid internship. Got just so you know, I did apply for Tegna internships as well. <laughs> you know, um, another thing you're going to hear about tomorrow on the producer session and assignment desk is we have a program called Producer in Residence. Um, unfortunately, it just the new class is starting. But if you, that's another opportunity with Integna. Um, okay. Is this and it's basically we're hiring graduates and kind of promise them employment for two years. And we're doing that program. We have two of them starting July first for us, and we're going to teach them how to be digital media producers, a lot of jobs, and mm -hmm. hopefully they'll work into a permanent job with us or Tegna within that two years. So that's Thank another program I'd keep an eye on. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And we're we, gonna we'll see a lot more questions. We will stay on and answer your questions. The next yes. one is uh, Brittany, our station. Let, group. Let, okay. let me do this, Steph, if you don't mind. Let me For just sure. go to the slide about the rest of the week in case anybody needs to jump off yeah. and wrap that up. And then we'll come back and finish answering your questions. Lauren, would you let um, Amy know we're gonna be late? Thanks. Okay, oh. so just so you guys know, this week, this, week, this, this afternoon, afternoon, we have we photo. Have photo wait, wait. Hit hit mute. mute. Joan? Yes. Yes. Okay. We can hear I'm, you. I'm echoing. Steph, can you hear me? Okay, hit yeah. So um, later this afternoon at two o'clock, we have photojournalism, editing, directors, engineering. Um, and then on Tuesday, digital journalism, and that's um, um, our digital director will be doing that session. Weather and sports, since those are 
you know, kind of a niche area. We'll have that on um, Tuesday at 2 p.m. And then on Wednesday, MMJ reporting and anchoring. That's at 10 a.m. on Wednesday. 2 p.m. is producing an assignment desk. Um, on Thursday at 10 a.m., sales and revenue with Lauren that you see on the screen. And then Thursday at 2 p.m., you'll be with me learning about our in-house marketing and creative agency. Um, so if you have not signed up for any of these and would still like to, you can do so. I'll send you the link. Just email pathways at wcnc.com. Um, and that takes, um, that takes you to an email to Lauren and myself. We'll email you the link. Um, that takes you to the links to all of the sessions. So, um, you know, Joan did a great inter overview today, but we go deeper into these different roles in these other sessions. So um, let us know if you still need to sign up. Joan? All right. All right. I'm still yeah, getting, okay. so can you guys hit a mute and then I'll unmute myself. Okay, better. Um, I, we talked about the scholarship, right? It's for the CSB Media School, Media Arts Center. So uh, John will be on at that last session on Friday to tell you how to apply for that if you've attended all eight sessions. Um, and then, you know, we also talked about joining um, associations. And of course, our partner, Charlotte Area Association of Black Journalists, we'd encourage you to um, join them as well. So we just wanted to wrap that up. And now we'll go back and just finish answering your questions for anybody who wants to stay on. Okay, okay so the session's over. Uh, if, if, if you want to bail out at this point, you can, and then we'll stay on and we'll continue to answer all the questions so that we get everybody's questions answered. Okay, so you're welcome okay. to stay or welcome to go. But thank you guys very much for joining us. Hope to see you this week. Okay, Lauren is back. I think we couldn't hear her. So Lauren, did you have your question? I did have a question. I got my mic working now. I You had previously answered it though. I just was wondering about internships within your company specifically. I, so I would look, you. Tegna stations are doing them and I would look uh -huh. um, at the producer in residence for next year if, you're, if that falls within your okay. educational. And then I believe we'll be offering them again come spring and summer. Okay, great. Thank you so much. And also thank you for doing this. I truly appreciate it. You bet. Thanks, Lauren. All right, Brittany had okay. a question. Are stations open to considering someone for an MMJ position without a reporter reel? You know, what I would probably do in that case, um, depending on what your training and your school has been, I would be looking for producing jobs. I would be looking for a producing job to get your foot in the door. And then you can maybe, if you're one of those people that rise up and, and, and are getting noticed by management, you can say you have an interest in MMJ and maybe you can start to learn and build a tape working with photographers, um, you know, um, folks at your station to build a tape to then either get an MMJ position at your station or apply for one at another station. I think producing, associate producing would probably be a better route in the door without a tape. And then Lenny um, wanted to know how do new stations determine their markets? Why is Columbia a different number and we're 25 market? It's based on the number of people you serve. So if you're in New York, you've got this huge uh, DMA um, the, of people you serve, the number and the smaller, you know, it goes down, that would be a higher number. Like Topeka, when I worked in Topeka was around market 140, right? Um, Wichita was market 67, Wichita, Kansas. Um, gotcha. Denver was market 17, Charlotte's market 22. So it's based on the number of people you serve. And typically so, the larger the market, they pay better. Gotcha. Um, like just because like Charlotte has a certain number, another station could have that same exact number too, right? It's not just like exclusive. No, to... just it's okay. only one per market. You're all stacked. So if so I lose- like a... Sorry, go ahead. If I lose population or gain population, they reconnoiter them and you might go up to market 21. You might go down to market 23. Oh, okay. So there's a you, whole list of rankings basically across the country. If you okay, would, gotcha. well, 
TV stations, DMA, um, Nielsen, N-I-E-L-S-E-N, because Nielsen mm -hmm. is the one that you could see the whole list of numbers okay, and the cool. rankings. Cool. All right. Thank you. Uh-huh. Gabrielle, um, I'm interested in education as a minor. Is there a way I can stay in the classroom while being in the newsroom? I, I think it's easier to go the other way. So if you came into television first and you were a reporter or an MMJ or a producer, and then you went and taught and part-time or even full-time that you might be able to then still work in a newsroom part-time, I think it's gonna be harder to go the other way. Um, although there are some part-time jobs like weekend assignment desk or editing that maybe you could teach and then do a part-time job to have your foot in the door in a newsroom. Thank you. You're bad. Uh, we have any more stuff? Yeah, I was just looking through to see if there was anyone that hasn't had a chance is there anyone that hasn't had a chance to ask a question? Anybody else have a question? We have a few others that have already asked, but I just wanted to make sure. Okay. I think, Lenny, did you have another question? Oh uh, yeah, I was just, I was just wondering, um, uh, with my major, I have like a lot of required classes that doesn't allow me to like really take classes to like explore. I remember Lauren like saying earlier that like go explore stuff. I haven't had an instructor who teaches my major saying go explore stuff, but on my like <laughs> list of required courses, there's like no no time to really choose a, a fun course to see what's out there. Uh, do you have any advice for that? Or I'm just basically a little stuck there. <laughs> Well, I would say as a whole, you know, any time that, um, you know, you can choose those various classes for your electives and things like that. Um, I know that I think you said you're majoring in meteorology, so that might be just a little bit different than, you know, that broader communications degree, um, where oftentimes you have that opportunity to explore, you know, marketing and advertising and public relations and graphic design, as well as the whole broadcast side of things. Um, but I would say just any time that you have, you know, generally there's going to be a certain number of electives and things like that that you have. So whenever you have that opportunity, you know, give advertising a try or, um, you know, give broadcast mm -hmm. journalism yeah. a try um, just to, you know, whenever you have that opportunity oh, to do okay. that. And then as well as with internships. I got you because I just there's something <laughs> called a restricted elective. If I can persuade my advisor and only that person, they'll approve it. I just have to persuade the person. There's no there like system for it. OK. All right. Thank you, guys. You have a nice day. Huh, go it's ahead. a tough minor. It's a tough minor with a lot of hard uh, classes as a part of it. So there isn't as much room for fun in that one. <laughs> yeah, it's my uh, it's my major, not the minor. No, I'm saying meteorology is a tough major. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. All yeah. right. Thank you, guys. It's nice meeting you. Nice meeting you guys. Anyone else? Any other questions? Okay, well, we appreciate you guys taking the time. I hope we see you all at some of the other sessions this week. You'll get a lot more in depth on the different um, verticals we talked about. So thank you for your interest in our profession. Hope to see you.